Right, so today we are starting off with uniform circular motion. Motion at a constant speed in a circle. Now there are three terms we need to be careful of and make sure we understand before we start. The first thing is the circumference of a circle. The dis distance around the outside. And the formula, it is actually on your formula sheet, equal to 2 pi r. Now there are a lot of similarities between circular motion and waves. So two terms we use for both. Time period, capital T. The time it takes for one complete cycle, circle, and that's measured in seconds, and therefore obviously frequency. The number of cycles in one second. Okay, and you measure that in hertz, remember. And these two things, remember, are related by t equals 1 over f. Now we're going to start off by looking at the radian. So to start off with, I'm going to draw a circle, an accurate one for a change, with a compass. And I think you can just about make that out. And important dimension when it comes to circles is its radius. Ah. Now the radian comes about from if you moved along an arc around that circle. Same distance equivalent to your radius. You would move through an angle of one radian. And since the circumference of a circle is equal to 2 pi r, then there must be 2 pi radians in a circle. Which means that one radian is equal to 360 over 2 pi, which is 57.3 degrees, approximately. Now another important term is the tangential speed. Now, if you were going to, I don't know, Put a Bunsen burner around your head or hold the tubing. If you let go of it in this position, it wouldn't go in that direction, it would go off in that direction. Okay, at a tangent to the circle. Now, the way we can work out our tangential speed is using our basic speed formula. Okay, which is distance divided by time. So if we were talking about a full circle, the distance is its circumference, 2 pi r, over the time to do that circle, which is the time period, t. And so we've got a first really important formula when it comes to circular motion. Okay, so your tangential speed is 2 pi r over t, which because, remember, frequency is 1 divided by the time period, it is also equivalent to 2 pi r f. So we're going to do an example now using that formula. And we're going to use planet Earth as our basis of it. So our example. Calculate the speed of planet Earth 
around the sun. So some numbers we need to know. We know we need to know to get V, it's 2 pi R F. Obviously 2 pi is a constant, it's just a number. The radius of Earth's orbit is 150 million kilometres, which is 150 billion metres. We've always got to use our SI units. And the time period. For Earth, well, it takes 365 and a quarter days to go around the sun. Therefore, that in seconds is going to be 365.25 times 24 times 60 times 60. 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day, 365.25 days in a year. Therefore, V is equal to 2 pi R over T, which is equal to 2 pi times 150 times 10 to the 9 over. Well, that number there comes out at 3.16 times 10 to the 6 seconds therefore the velocity of the earth comes out at 2.99 times 10 to the 4 meters per second so once we know a time period or our frequency we know the radius of the orbit we can work out how fast an object must be going Now the next thing we're going to look at today is angular speed. And this has the symbol omega. Now it's a little omega. Capital omega is what we use for the ohm. Okay, but little omega looks like a W. Now angular speed is the rate at which the angle changes with respect to time. And our angle has to be in radians, and therefore our angular speed is in radians per second. Now, if we think of a complete circle, angle we would move through would be 2 pi radians and our time would have been one time period so our angular speed can be count from 2 pi over t which also means because t is 1 over f that omega can equal 2 pi f And we've already looked at the fact that V is equal to 2 pi R over T. Now if you think this bit here is equal to omega. Therefore V can also equal R omega. So we've got a few equations now that we can use. This one is given in your equation booklet. And this one is given in your equation booklet. So we've got some there. Others aren't there. We just need to remember them from definition. So your angular speed, you've sort of got to think about it a bit like the second hand of a clock. As it's moving round, every part on the second hand has got the same angular speed. They're all moving or covering an angle at the same rate. But if you're further out, 
you've got to cover a bigger distance. So you are actually moving with a higher tangential velocity the further out you are, but you've all got exactly the same angular speed. So let's try another example. The cyclist is travelling at 12 metres per second. And the wheels have a radius of 0 0.40 meters. Calculate. A. The frequency of rotation of the wheels. B. The angular speed of the wheels and C the angle the wheel turns through in 0 0.1 seconds so if we think about A Okay, we know V. Now, if the cyclist is going at 12 metres per second, the wheels must be rotating on the edge at 12 metres per second. So we know the tangential velocity must be 12 metres per second. We know R is equal to 0 0.40 metres. So frequency, we can work out using the formula Tangential velocity is equal to 2 pi r f. So we stick our numbers in. 12 equals 2 pi times the radius times the frequency. Therefore frequency is equal to 12 divided by 2 pi times 0 0.4 and our frequency comes out at about 4.8 hertz b the angular speed of the wheels that's omega so we've got tangential speed we've got radius therefore omega we can get from v equals r omega so, omega must equal V over R. Should have put the numbers in before I rearrange, but there you go. Therefore, V equals 12 over 0 0.4, which equals 30 radians per second. Part C. The angle the wheel turns through in 0 0.10 seconds. Well, again, from formulas earlier, we know that angular velocity, angular speed, is equal to the angle divided by the time. Therefore, 30 must equal our angle, angle divided by 0 0.1. Therefore, our angle is equal to 30 times 0 0.1, which equals 3 radians. <laughs>